All right. Now, another way uh, to get lava for your magmatic engine is to use another one of the thermal expansion mods. Uh, thermal expansion engines. Or, <laughs> boy, I can't talk today. Another one of the thermal, thermal expansion machines, which is called a magma crucible. Um, I don't have one on me right now because I wasn't sure if I was going to get into it in this episode. But we're going to go ahead and pull the magma crucible. Which is, it's a little tricky to make because it does require nether brick. So in order to make this magma crucible, you, you're going to have to need to go into the nether and find yourself a nether fortress in order to get it. At least that's in single player. Now, it's only made with copper, and nether brick is the hardest probably thing to get out of this. Uh, just simple bucket on top, and another one of our gold uh, redstone reception cells. Um, I don't know if you've noticed a pattern yet, but a lot of these machines all take the machine frames and the reception sh <laughs> reception s coils. Now, the reason they all take reception coils is because all of these machines use energy. So, reception coil for using an energy in a machine. Oh, funny, because the magmatic engine is an engine that generates energy, and it has a redstone transmission coil. Huh. It's almost like they know what they're doing. <laughs> so, using the, uh, the mag magma crucible... Because it does require energy, uh, what we do is we stick it on next to one of our machines. As you can tell, all of that energy that was stored up half filled this thing already to the brim. <laughs> oh, so what we do is we're going to get out some of our waterproof pipes again. Uh, looks like I didn't get enough of them. Um, pipes. Now, these uh, these pipes that I'm using right now are actually part of uh, the Buildcraft mod. So they don't actually come directly from uh, thermal expansion, but they are incredibly useful in moving liquids around. Uh, so we've got our magma crucible set up here, and it's going to draw off the power line, which I may not shouldn't have hooked it to the gold, but that's all right. Now, this machine here, I definitely like to put... Uh, a lever on um, simply because it likes to run like constantly unless you tell it otherwise uh, so let's go ahead and do this I guess I could have made more of those we'll stick it on the front here turn it on and off oh, I hate it when they always go crooked there we go now what the magma crucible can do is you can actually take and you can break down cobblestone into lava Cobblestone into lava. There we go. Burns down a piece of cobblestone. You'll see this little meter right here start fluctuating. And it'll turn into lava and it'll start building up a surplus of lava. So it has an internal tank of it looks like 10,000 MBs, which if we do our math, each lava bucket is 1,000, right? So this will hold 10 buckets of lava. Now what you can do is obviously what I've done here is I've pumped it into our tank. So in theory we have kind of our an endless supply of lava pumping in to fuel the machine, which powers the lava maker, which fuels the machine, which powers yeah, I'm stuck in a loop right there. But what we have, uh, me and my friend Rayman have, we're looking at the actual numbers that that come from this. Um, basically the power usage for the magma crucible is, looks like it's maintaining right around 9 millijoules per tick to break down this lava. Um, it actually, because it's, the cobblestone is so much slower, that the, the amount of energy that you get from one lava bucket is, again, 4 millijoules per tick. However, the... I forget what they call I had the website up earlier. That, in essence, one lava bucket will give you so much energy from a magma engine, it actually takes longer to turn a piece of cobblestone into a lava. So you are actually losing energy using cobblestone as lava. But if you've gone into the nether to find nether brick to make it, 
Oh, I already put it up. <laughs> if you've gone into the nether in order to find a nether fortress, in order to get nether brick, then that means obviously you've been in the nether. So if you've been in the nether and you can get nether rack, then guess what it happens when you put nether rack into the magma crucible? Boom. Lava. Now what you see here, ah, this is what I was looking for. Um, each piece of nether rack costs 80,000 millijoules to convert into 1,000 magma buckets. Or, I, it's MBs. <laughs> so basically, in order to get one bucket of lava, it costs you 80, or 8,000 Minecraft jewels. In order to make one cobblestone into a bucket of lava, it costs you 20,000 Minecraft jewels. And basically what we figured out was that the magma engine, magmatic engine, puts off only, um, I think it puts off to, oh, crap. Uh, puts off 10,000? Yeah, puts off 10,000 Minecraft jewels per lava bucket because if you were to turn these machines off and the, and it would start storing up energy, um, it stores it up at about 10,000 millijoules before it starts bleeding off. So, long story short, it actually costs you more to make cobblestone into magma than it does to make uh, netherrack into magma, into lava. So, go your, get yourself in the nether, pick yourself a couple stacks of it, and boom, you got yourself a nice little lava supply. This is actually what I've got going on in my server Let's Play on the uh, the Minecraft fan server Feed the Beast. So if you guys want to check that out, you can see it in action. I've got one heck of a setup. Um, <clears throat> so to go over again what we covered um, in this episode was about the Magmatic Engine, which actually runs off lava itself, and the only thing you'll need for it is tin. Uh, You'll need 10 ingots to make it. Um, then, of course, the magma engine feeds into these conductive pipes, which you can route into any machine you want. I can even, you know, keep tracing this off to another machine. However, you do lose a little bit of energy. Uh, I want to say it's every, like, 1.1% uh, 1 .1 every, uh, every pipe, or it may be more than that. Yeah, but... With stone pipe especially, you lose a little bit of energy the further away you go. Using gold pipe is more expensive, but it maintains your energy at a higher level. Um, and so this is what I like to use to get started, because one, it's slightly less resource intensive than things like industrial craft, which is kind of a common practice um, in order to get other additional resources. So I guess this concludes another episode, guys. Thanks again for watching. Tune in for more. Feed the Beast strategy guys from me, hey you. <laughs>